Today I'm traveling two hours north to an abandoned insane asylum in the middle of northern Ontario. As you can see by all the snow around me, we are in the midst of a Canadian winter. So my primary objective upon reaching the asylum will be to establish a pretty good campsite where I can shelter myself from the elements. Last night it got down to about negative 22. So I'm hoping tonight will be a little bit warmer, but I have to prepare for the worst. I've brought a lot of uh, hot pockets and some warmer sleeping supplies this time. I hope I can pull this one off. It's definitely gonna be a different challenge from episode one. I'm just gonna drive up there and see if I can last through the night. All right, it looks as, this is as far as we can drive here. I think we gotta park and take the rest on foot. All right, so here's the deal. We've arrived at the front gate and it's about 3.30 right now. And I have a 20 minute hike to the actual location. The sun sets here around 5.30, 6 o'clock. So that means I have about two or so hours to get as much footage as I can in the daylight and navigate the place. Last night, it got around to about negative 20 here. Tonight it's expected to be about the same. So as you can guess, it's gonna be a rough one. The theme of episode one was to survive the wildlife and coyotes. The theme of episode two is going to be, again, to survive, but this time the cold. So we're going to try and take the brunt of this Canadian winter and last with the supplies I've brought. With that, let's get going. About a year or so ago, the Ontario Provincial Police began cracking down on people visiting this location, issuing tons of trespassing and criminal mischief charges to explorers who came here. With this in the back of my head, I knew getting caught at this location wasn't an option. As I made my approach to the abandoned asylum, I instantly noticed that the roads within the complex were freshly plowed. This raised some level of concern with me because it meant that someone was still occasionally maintaining the grounds. I just had to hope that I wouldn't encounter them during my stay. Essentially, I have to try and figure out how to fit this clunky, massive bag to that tiny window over there. It's going to be so hard to navigate these halls with my big clunky bag. I want to see if maybe I can get up to the roof, find a place to camp, and then possibly drop my bag off so I'll be a little bit more nimble in these hallways because you can see the AC is just and the ventilation has completely collapsed on this floor. Oh. Constructed in 1896, this sanitarium housed over 400 live-in residents in its prime. The area was chosen for its remote location, where patients could take in plenty of fresh air and sunlight, two things which were believed to be vital for tuberculosis patients at this time. This looks like the front lobby. It looks like everything's covered in at least a solid like three to four inches of ice. 
so I hope it's stable enough for me to walk on. <laughs> With temperatures in the area being consistently below freezing, any mold spores caused by seasonal flooding should be dormant and of little danger to me. That being said, there were still several other hazardous substances in this building that I needed to avoid directly inhaling. I need to put on a respirator soon. That looks like it leads down into the basement. Might save that for later. Just hoping I don't run into anybody down here. The main stairwell here. Looks like I don't need my flashlight anymore. With advancements in the treatment for tuberculosis that came about in the mid-1960s, the institutionalization of tuberculosis patients was deemed no longer necessary, and the location was remodeled into an asylum for the insane. Statement of traveling. After major government budget cuts in the early 1990s, the facility could no longer afford its upkeep and eventually closed its doors for good in 1993. This room's interesting. You can see a lot of uh, mold and almost moss build up on the walls there. been like an assisted sort of shower it looks like like your locking mechanism here water all right let's see what this floor has to offer oh the door's like frozen shut why oh, I'd have to bring such a big bag sadly I'm gonna have to abandon my bag for a little bit so I can explore these areas here. Look, these hallways, I still need a flashlight even during the day. I can only imagine at night.
these are all the people that have been to this location. startled me. This place is really coming apart. Look at the orange curtains in this room just falling all over the place. You can get a better shot of the... Well, it's a cafeteria area right in front of us. That's where I want to try to get to. I think I have to go through the tunnels. The more I wandered the halls of this massive abandoned building, the more I noticed how empty the place seemed, with the only sounds being the wind outside and the occasional falling bits of rubble, I began to understand just how alone I was. I swear I just heard something tapping on one of the windows. Creepy. So it's all been like patients' rooms. And you can see they're all bright colors, like bright pink and yellow, because and blue, as you can see on the door there, because they believed that in the treatment of tuberculosis, that bright colors, sunlight, and fresh air all had a helping hand in treating tuberculosis. Jeez, this hallway is just a mess of wires. Another bathtub room. Approaching the final floor here. Hopefully we can find a place to set up our camp before it gets too dark. The sun's already starting to set. Damn, well this is the most, definitely the most put together we've seen of any of the floors. Oh, I slipped. So I just heard some tapping on one of the windows outside. So I'm hoping it's not maintenance people. I'm killing my flashlight for a little bit. I'm just gonna have a look outside. It sounded like it was coming from this direction, but like at the base of the building. I doubt they'd come in here, but I'm just trying to be safe. Oh. That's weird. There's nothing out here. Okay. I swear I heard what was like a car door slamming or something. So I thought maybe security, I don't know.
This might have been like a employee room here, employee bathroom maybe. You can see my reflection in the cracked mirror there. Portholes are neat. With daylight vanishing and temperatures dropping, I knew I had to find somewhere to sleep soon if I wanted any shot at making it through the night. <sighs> Holy, that took some strength. You can see how much snow is built up here. But we're on the roof. My strategy for tonight was to use one of the many service rooms located on the roof for my campsite. With this, I would ideally have four walls and a closable door to seal myself away from both animals as well as the elements. Unfortunately, most of these rooms were either flooded, filled with junk, or frozen shut. Please open. Oh, it's... Yeah, no, there's no way we're getting this one open. After much searching, I managed to find a small maintenance room on one of the lower sections of the roof that I could unpack and make camp in for the night. So I found this little nook across from where I came in, and although you can't open or close this door, which I don't like, it looks like it's going to be my best bet for setting up a camp. I also don't like the sound of that, but gotta sleep somewhere. Gracious camp in the world, but no new for the night, I hope. Got three walls, a roof. What more could you ask for? This time I came in a little bit more prepared than the last time. <clears throat> My friend lent me this. Essentially, like it's like an inflatable air mattress. And this is going to help a lot because. The ground is very cold and sleeping against it last time I lost a lot of my body temperature which definitely made sleeping one of the most difficult parts of this whole explore. But by putting a little bit of air between myself and the, the ground, hopefully I can retain a bit more body heat than last time. Alright, we got a nice little bed for ourselves here and I'm excited to test it out. I also packed a much warmer sleeping bag. This should be good for up to negative 20. So hopefully tonight will keep me warm and I won't freeze. I was lucky enough to be able to borrow these from my friend who does uh, wintertime camping. Now with the tradition of the Alone series. I do want to show you guys a part of this uh, insane asylum that I haven't shown you yet during the day. And that's because it's a little bit tricky to find. And that is the cafeteria. So our objective right now is I'm gonna, keeping up with the tradition, venture out into the, the depths of this location at night well, it is pretty dark, and unfortunately my flashlight is on its last legs. But uh, I will have to go into the basement, I believe, and cross through the tunnels to get into the cafeteria because it's all boarded up from the outside. And it's soaked up to at least the shin level for uh, water. And I bought these bad boys this morning because I, I just remembered this last second. And unfortunately, they only had at Walmart kid size 7 galoshes. And I'm a men's size 12, so this is a bit of a tight fit. 
Not exactly what you'd call a perfect fit, but we'll make do for at least an hour or so. Okay, let us venture down into the unknown. As you can see, it's noticeably a lot darker. It's pretty much pitch black. There's little to no sunlight. I'm just gonna save time by going all the way down to the main floor. Just gotta be careful because these stairs are covered in ice and I'm wearing really small shoes. Oh, I just took a nasty spill down those stairs. Look at all that ice. <sighs> I'm just happy I didn't break any of the camera equipment. Okay. Oh, gotta pick myself up. Let's keep moving. We're on the bottom floor though. This place does not look any more fun during the night than it did during the day. So we're back into the main lobby here. And beyond this creepy construction tarp, into the creepy basement is where I believe we need to go. Hopefully it's one direction so I don't get lost down here. This leads to where I think it leads. I don't know where these arrows all point to. Oh, this looks like it is. So, a woman's washroom. I think we found it, guys. I think we found the cafeteria. My voice just echoes. It's sort of been like the uh, buffet area where patients would grab their food. utilities just makes for a very unsettling setting it looks like it just keeps going on here We 
these would have been like the freezers. flashlight is about to die but for you guys I'm gonna take a shot at the basement oh, I don't know if this is the most stable of steering as you can see the ceramic broke here oh. I really hope my flashlight doesn't die here is like the underneath underneath This is what I wore my galoshes for the last time, or the first time I was in here. It's all frozen now, because of the weather, but this was all water and I got soaked. Oh my god! That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> okay, it looks like it's not completely frozen, so I'm going to try and walk outside of these white gaps here. Slippery, I gotta watch where I step. These old suitcases. Huh. Well, it looks like we hit a dead end here. Just heard someone. Oh my God. <sighs> I swear I just heard someone over here. Or something, maybe an animal, I don't know. Oh, I guess it was nothing. <laughs> I don't know. After having my fun exploring this terrifying basement, I decided it was time for me to head back to my tent, 
My creepy night was finally coming to an end, or so I thought. Sorry, but the only light that I have is this flickery headset of mine to get me home. Oh, good thing we're almost at the end of this tunnel. I swear I did not plan this. My flashlight is legitimately dead, as you can see. I mean, it, it all just adds to the fun, I guess. Yeah, this is the stairwell by the basement. This is like something out of a horror game here. Okay. Now I think we take this stairwell up. Oh. I know you can't really see it, but I love this crappy little tent. Okay, now that we go back to our tent, the game plan is to warm up my super cold feet that were crunched into small boots for the whole time, change them out with some new socks, and get them under some of these puppies, these hot pockets here. Shake it up, put it right in your sock. Oh, that feels nice. Whew. Oh, now it's time to hopefully get ready for bed. So I don't know if you can hear outside, but the wind has definitely picked up, making it pretty hard for me to go to bed because it keeps rattling on uh, several things outside. It's now about 2, 2.30. Maybe gotten a solid 30 minutes of sleep. It's been a little bit restless, but I'm hoping I can tough it out for the rest of the night. It also doesn't help that essentially right now I'm sleeping on top of one giant sheet of rebar, which is uh, kind of suspended in this elevator maintenance room. And uh, every time I move, like even the slightest bit, it can make like a loud echoing bang, which does not help me sleep if I'm trying to like roll over. <laughs> oh boy, it's a chilly one. It is a chilly one indeed. <laughs> this has been a tough night. I think we're at about like negative 19 right now. And probably the only reason that I'm staying warm is because of these hot pockets that I have in here. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera, I'm just that cold. <laughs> oh boy. Nothing like a cold can of beans for breakfast, all right? cold last night that even the inside of my tent here as you, know, you can see is like covered in ice these boots are going to be lovely to put back on they froze overnight so there's 
rock solid. <laughs> All right, so we lasted the night. As you can see by my breath, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, and the ice surrounding the tent here. It was a rather chilly night. I think it dropped to below, I think it got to about negative 19. And uh, as you can see, I burnt through quite a lot of these hot pockets. But uh, yeah, aside from that, it wasn't too bad. We didn't get attacked by any coyotes, that's always a positive. We managed to find a pretty good shelter. Um, I mean, obviously we couldn't close the door, which kind of sucked, but at least we had three walls and the wind was pretty strong all night long, so I'm very thankful that at least I found a place indoors. And yeah, I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this adventure. <laughs> I surely suffered, but hey, gotta, gotta, Go through a little bit of pain for a little bit of fun, you know? And um, definitely was fun. As the sun rose and morning came, I realized I had survived. Alone and freezing, I tackled the cold and made it through the night.